Hey guys, Bingo Cat here. So today, we'll be comparing Windows 10 Pro 64-bit versus Windows Server 2016, also 64-bit. I have both operating systems running a VMware workstation and gave them both the exact same system specifications. Now, Windows Server is pretty interesting. Windows Server, um, um, the use the use case it's in the name it's meant to be run on server hardware it's meant for server applications server services it's not meant to be used as your main day-to-day -day operating system where Windows 10 Pro it is meant to be used as your day-to-day -day operating system now despite the use cases for both operating systems being kind of different um, they can actually run on a, a lot of the same hardware, like chances are if I wanted to install Windows Server 2016 on physical hardware, you could just take any old PC made within the last few years and throw Windows Server on there, it will probably work, I've done it before. However, I would say there's really isn't any advantages to running Server 2016 over Windows 10 Pro. On your regular machine, some people do it because Windows Server 2016 has a higher RAM limit than Windows 10 Pro. So if you wanted like one terabyte of RAM for some reason, um, you could use Windows Server 2016 to accomplish that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn both operating systems on and let them boot up. Now, I'm not a software engineer. I, I am not pretending. I am a software engineer, but I believe Windows 10 and Windows Server is based on really similar code. Whoops, here we go. Now, the lock screens for both look really similar. Now on the left operating system, of course, you just have a lock screen. I just move the mouse or press the space bar and I can log in. On the right operating system here in Server 2016, I have to press Control alt delete to unlock the screen first. So I'm going to press Control alt insert since I'm in a VM. And I'm going to type in my super secret passcode for both. I'll be back after I type in the passwords. Alright, as you guys can see, Server 2016 loaded up faster. Now the desktop for both operating systems, it looks really similar at first glance. Almost the exact same theming. The first thing you'll notice that's different is that over here in Server 2016, a window pop-up giving me the uh, something called Server Manager, which I'll get into more later. The left one didn't do that. Also, the left one has several programs pinned to its taskbar by default. The right one has a slightly different taskbar. So, something else you'll probably notice is that there's a search bar here on the taskbar in Windows 10. And you have access to Cortana, the voice assistant. Over here, you don't have Cortana at all. Something else that Windows Server 2016 doesn't have that's almost immediately obvious. Um, look down here. Do you see a Microsoft Edge icon? Hmm, I don't. This says Internet Explorer on it. And when you open it, you get IE 11. Now if you go to the search near the type in Edge, lo and behold, nothing shows up. Windows 10, on the other hand, of course it has Microsoft Edge. So checking out the start menu of both operating systems, you'll notice that Server 2016 has a lot less programs than regular Windows 10. And this is on purpose. Once again, I mentioned that Server 2016 is not supposed to be your day-to-day -day operating system you use on your main PC. So therefore, you don't need all the programs that Windows 10 has over here, very consumer-oriented stuff like Minecraft Windows 10 Edition on a server version of Windows. It's the same way you do not need the server manager application on a regular consumer version of Windows. It just makes sense that way. Now, server manager I said I'd get more into is nice. It's a nice convenient way to manage your server, see all the services your server has. You can also add roles and features, remove roles and features, add servers to manage, etc. It's really nice. Now, Something that Server 2016 can do, by the way, is you don't have to have the graphical user interface like you see over here in Server 2016. If you want to, all you need is a command line interface. If you run the server, and I believe it's called Server Core Mode, you won't have this graphical user interface. You won't have a start menu, you won't have a file explorer, you won't have a server manager. 
you're just gonna have a command line. And honestly, eh, I'm, I'm kind of mixed about that. Um, the reason that you can do this is to save on system resources on the server, and that makes total sense except what computer doesn't have the capability to run Windows nowadays? What server computer doesn't have the capability to run a graphical user interface? I mean, is it really going to take that much of a performance hit? Really? To run the Windows graphical user interface? I don't know. Another big reason that server core exists is that if you're running a server core version of Windows Server instead of running a version of Windows Server with the GUI, was this will reduce the attack surface of the operating system. Now back when Microsoft developed Server Core when they debuted it with Server 2008, they claimed that about 70% of the security vulnerabilities in Windows from the prior five years would not have affected Server Core. And so another reason that a lot of administrators like to use Server Core is that um, this reduces the chance that basically um, <laughs> something security related will go wrong in Windows. What some server administrators do is they install and configure everything with the GUI, right? And then once everything is configured, they remove the GUI and just leave it in server core mode. And if they want to configure something again, they go ahead and install the GUI real quickly, do whatever they need to do, and then remove the GUI. Either way, I, I mean, I don't dislike the command line. I'm fine with the command line. I use command line interfaces all the time, but, you know, I still like having the option of the GUI there because using the GUI is just easier for some tasks, to be honest. Just like the same way using the command line is easier for some tasks. Now, something else I want to point out about Windows Server 2016 is notice how it comes with virtually no universal Windows platform applications, virtually none. The only ones that I see are, you know, applications like settings, where in Windows 10, they're trying to get people to use universal Windows platform applications. All right, let's go ahead and turn off both virtual machines. Sorry this video wasn't <laughs> that much longer, but, um, you know. There really wasn't that many differences in the graphical user interface. Most of the differences is just um, what these operating systems, like who these operating systems are aimed at. Server 2016 is aimed at people who basically want to run server applications, server services like file sharing, an email server, etc. Where Windows 10 is meant to be your day-to-day -day operating system. Um, it's meant for you to play games on, check email on, browse the web on, etc. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And go ahead and click that bell icon if you like my videos so you get notifications every time I upload a video. Otherwise, YouTube might not show my video to you guys. Uh, make sure to check out my Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. Link down below in the video description. And check out my gaming channel too. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye.